Controversy about the brain death of an inmate. 25 year old Tyus Hutton injured during some kind of fight with another inmate. It's a fight that Hutton's family says they were never notified of by county deputies until six days after he was admitted and on life support. Jail operations have been under fire for many years, especially since the May's consent decree was issued in 2020, calling for the county to improve conditions behind bars. What that looks like has caused controversy of its own, and you may think all of those issues were resolved last month when county supervisors approved an expansion of that facility. But at least one group disagrees that the project is a done deal and is still fighting for it to go in a different direction. I am live now with Liz Blum, founder of Decarcerate Sacramento, the group that still hopes to convince the board to do something else. Good morning to you, Liz. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Definitely. So we are talking about the approval for the intake and health services facility at the jail. You intend to speak to supervisors tomorrow, supervisors who've already said yes to this. You intend to point out to them what you say are the county budget implications of what's been decided on. You say that this effort would require the largest bond the county has ever considered, a billion dollar bond? Yes, um, the board recently approved the intent to for the county to reimburse itself for a $925 million bond through a high interest loan. Um, and this would wish this would be the largest debt that the county has ever taken on um, if the county moves forward with this project. Um, and it would deplete the overall county budget, um, which would impact the services and infrastructure um, that our county needs to be healthy and safe. Um, this would be a lease revenue bond, like you're talking about. The interest alone could be $50 million a year, which is more than the entire homeless services budget, something else that's controversial that this board is dealing with. And so you say this is not the right move for the county just because of all of the other things that would be impacted. Absolutely. Um, you know, this it's really extremely concerning that the county based their decision to revisit this jail expansion project primarily due to the opinion of an architecture firm that is that continues to profit from this project. Um, the fact is that there are faster and cheaper ways to meet the Mays Consent Decree um, that don't involve a building. The Mays Consent Decree does not require a building. And unfortunately, the county has not explored the very real alternatives that exist. Um, for example, um, the four large county courtrooms that are currently in the county-owned jail um, that could be used to meet ADA and HIPAA requirements. All right, and let's just review what the Mays decision was calling for for folks who might not have been following this part of it so closely. The Mays decree was trying to, to get at uh, minimum institutional rights for people who are incarcerated, which would be easing overcrowding and on the mental health side, providing more space for treatment to happen in a confidential and more relaxed environment. Now you talked about the courtrooms. Is there any other space that could be used? Well, really what this jail annex comes down to is meeting the ADA and HIPAA requirements for the booking loop. Um, the county, um, the architecture firm, you know, that the county hired to look at this project claims that there's no way to do that in the current building, but they did not look at the entire building when they made that decision as they were contracted to, to complete this project, which is a huge conflict of interest. Um, and it's also important to note that the county is afraid of uh, federal receivership, you know, and scared if they um, don't move forward with this project, that that is a possibility. But the bottom line is that that's currently a threat um, the, uh, that plaintiffs in the Mays lawsuit have made if they don't transfer people with mental illness outside of the jail. Um, and so, you know, the good news is that the count that this is not inevitable. The the there are alternatives, and we are seeing the board. Um, shift and wanting to make the responsible decision for the county that does not include a billion dollar jail plan. So the RFP or request for proposals for all of this, this hasn't gone out yet. So you see this as a stage where things can still be stopped, still be redirected. Absolutely. So all the county did was hire was was really the intent for this to move forward. They are go, planning to put out an RFP for the design build entity in November and vote on that in next spring. Um, and they do have time to reverse course on this. The bottom line is that this is going to take way too long to even meet the consent decree. Um, and again, there are alternatives and the, the county um, should not be jeopardizing the future of our county budget for this um, project that's not needed. 
All right, when you say way too long, we're talking maybe some, we would see something in 2028 under the current course of action? Yes, and that is a very ambitious and unlikely timeline. And you mentioned um, sort of the oversight coming in with a receivership or a conservatorship. What do you see happening to the county if project plans stay on the current track? Well, the county just received a letter on August 25th um, threatening legal action if they don't um, meet terms of the lawsuit that have nothing to do with the building. And so the building really won't save them from legal action at this point. Um, they are being forced to, within 30 days, come up with a plan by, I believe, November, by September 24th um, to transfer people with serious mental illness um, in the jail to hospitals. And that is a legal requirement that they are not meeting, that they've had three years to meet. Um, and so the, the, the building will not prevent um, the legal action that they're afraid of. All righty, Liz Bloom with Decarcerate Sacramento. Thank you so much for bringing your perspective. We here at Fox 40, of course, will be also following the budget negotiations and talks that happen at the supervisors meeting tomorrow. We appreciate you. Thanks so much.